Hello again. Um, I had another request, this time um, to show how I made this card. Um, this is a, quite a small square card. Again, it's cut from um, a piece of A4, but it's a, about a five inch square. Um, the things I've used on here are from Charlie and Paulson, which is a German company that was introduced to me by a friend I've made via the Clean and Simple card making Facebook group, Margit, who lives in, in Innsbruck in Austria. She told me about this company and they make some absolutely fabulous things. Well, I fell in love with this set of flower dies. I've kept all the bits together off and I, I snipped them apart, but I've kept them all together. And the effect that I really rather like is this mottled um, petal look. And how I achieved that was by printing a sheet of watercolour flowers. This is a digital image from a company called, I call it Pingwing, P-N-G-W-I-N-G, -G, say it how you like, I call it Pingwing. And I really love the fact that it's loose sort of colour and uh, lots of variations of pinks within it. So what I do, print, this is just as printed, open word, go to the download, click insert and that's how it the size it comes out which is fabulous so then what i do is you can see here where i cut that die cut from like this and by doing that i get lots lots of pieces that have got some pink some white some pink and white and the, the effect together i think is is lovely so that's how I get these and, and the ones that I don't use in a on a card I keep in a little box and the next time I want some I just go and grab a few more petals to make another flower. Okay the next thing I discovered was that um, Charlie and Portion also make an embossing folder which complements these petals these flowers which I thought was lovely. Now it's quite a big embossing folder and I just wanted to use um, a small card. So what I did was emboss the whole thing and then just cut up a, a piece of it. So I had a bit of a problem with that as well actually when it came to it but I'll tell you about that now. You may encounter this with your die cutting machine, you may not. If you don't, all to the good. But when I tried to emboss this embossing folder, in my, I've got here a, um, a Spellbinders Platinum 6. I'll move it in just a little bit. Um, and when you, um, when you cut or emboss anything, anything at all, in your embossing machine, you should feel a little resistance but it shouldn't be a huge effort. If it's really, really tough, the sandwich is too thick. Don't do it, you'll ruin your machine. So with this one, to do a, an embossing, I am supposed to put that onto the base, there's my base place, put the card in the embossing folder on the base plate and use the embossing plate. So come to do this, and I can't turn it. It's too hard to turn and I don't want to damage either the machine, the plate, the embossing folder or anything else. So I thought, what can I do? I'll try it with just a cutting plate instead. So I'll put the cutting plate on. This is just a regular cutting plate, not the second one. Went through and it just goes through and it doesn't really make any any effect at all. It, it just it just kind of went through, it wasn't thick enough. So I thought I need to use some kind of shim. And a shim is basically just a piece of card, paper, metal, that adds another slight layer of thickness just to pad out a sandwich. So I looked in, in my drawer and I came across a couple of 
thin bits of old magnetic sheet. These are very, very thin. So I popped, in fact, two of these. I tried one, first of all, and then I put a second on. Put that on top. Then the thin cutting plate, not the embossing plate. And with just enough resistance, it went through. Let me show you. Move this back out of the way. You could, you didn't have to use magnetic sheets. You could use paper. You could have used a, a proper metal sheet. And there it is, beautifully crisply embossed. Can you see that? It is a lovely thing. So, if you come across a problem in that way, there is a solution. Try and take the sandwich down. You can build it up from whatever, but um, don't ever try and get something that is too thick through your um, die cutting machine. You'll ruin something, I'm sure. OK, so having got that, I just want to use a, a portion of it. So out came the trimmer. probably have cut this on my guillotine actually but I can't get that over here very easily so I'm going to cut off a bit of the edge because I don't want that very edge bit okay let's take that off and we'll have is this bit absolutely square yes it is lovely so we'll have a little bit from here I prefer to cut with this pushing towards the stop at the end can you see that there? If I if I cut if I cut this way, I might be dragging this slightly away from that edge and I get slightly out of square. But if I start from this side and push it towards that, I'm gonna keep it absolutely square. Says she. Normally I do. Let's have a look. And let's take a little bit from here. There we go. So that is still a bit large. I can cut it down, whatever. So just to give this a bit of a finish, I would cut another piece as I've done here, which is just a tad larger. And I've put that onto some foam tape. Sorry about the green, greeny yellow thumbs. I've been messing with ink. Now, coming to make these things up, I find these a bit tricky, to be perfectly honest. Um, I never know which bits to put together, but they, they sort of manage somehow. So what I often do is this. I get a, um, a glue dot. These are from sticks to anything. I use this company quite a bit. Um, and I put a glue dot on the middle somewhere. Behind the middle. Okay. So now I can look for another one. Could put that there like that, or I spend ages fiddling around trying to, that one there. What else have I got? I've got another bit here. Let's have a look. I think I just like that one leaf from there. Cut him off. Let's cut him there. Okay. Let's put that there. And th there we've got a flower. Now, if it looks a little bit of a mess in the middle, which it will do because you've got overlapping pieces, what I do is add a couple of little tiny flat-backed adhesive pearls. So before I do that, just going to turn it upside down onto a, a foam mat and just give it a little rub around just to give these petals just a bit of definition and then if you press in the middle it looks much more like a flower so now we will put some tiny little adhesive pearls on the top these are once one centimetre, they're tiny, but they're so delicate, so pretty. A lot of them ping away. Whoops, I like that one. 
there we go so there's one of my flowers like that one there okay which we could add on to this piece the last little bit i want to show today is the sentiment and um you can alter the color of the sentiments that you uh, stamp by using a stamp stamping platform and either repeated stampings inkings of the same um, ink pad or a mix of a couple because you know if you use a stamping platform you can stamp in exactly the same place over and over again so this one is um, by Vazen. I've got a bit of an old um, uh, carrier sheet from my silhouette portrait in here and um, a square bit from something else, but that's neither here nor there. So here is my sentiment. This is from an old woodware set by the look of it. Um, popped onto the where I want it on the piece of card. Close up the lid, pick it up. Okay. Now here I've got a very old um, stamping up ink pad. And I know that this goes fairly well with that the colours on that. Press. But look how pale it is. Can you see that? It's really pale. So I'm going to do it again. Still pale. I'm going to do it again. And each time I do this, the colour is getting deeper. And I can just keep going until I come to a shade that I think I'm happy with. And I think that one goes pretty well. Here's my flower I just got. Do you see? I'll perhaps hold that up for you so you can see it. Can you see that? It's quite a good match. Am I showing it to you? There it is. Okay, so then, as I did the other day, it's just a question of assembling your various elements. I have my bit of embossing, which I can cut down further if I want to. I've got a flower. I've got a sentiment. And it's a question of just keeping things simple um i may decide to put the same use the same size card as base as this i may go to a larger size i may do a rectangular one um there's no hard and fast rules but you know and you can vary vary what you do and if i use a trimmer to do cut a straight edge like this i would either use the trimmer to cut the sentiment as well or I would use a die that had a straight edge too, so that it was matching. If, I, if I'd if chosen to cut this out with a, um, a stitch die, then I would like to use a stitch die for the sentiment as well. So there's that feeling of unity. Um, I hope you don't mind if I don't carry on and finish, because I think that's kind of the boring bit, really. But... Um, you saw probably a previous video where I assembled a card. Um, but the, the various elements are, are really important. Hanging off the edge there. We could have just a, a leaf like this one. Where's that one I didn't use before? Like that. Do you see? Beautiful. Lovely, lovely stuff. Okay. Well, there's another one for you to have a little think about. And... Um, I'll, I'll make this card up and I will show you the finished article. Thanks so much for watching.